the physicians at Midwest ENT have cared for the Metro St. Paul area for the last century. The doctors, patients, diseases, and their treatment have also changed through the century. This notable practice has been dedicated to excellent patient care, medical teaching, and clinical research. The modern ENT care system is reflected locally by the Midwest ENT practice and healthcare community. Like a river's flow, this journey has been made up of many streams. The journey started with humble beginnings in 1880. Andrew Hilger, the future founder of Midwest ENT, was born in that year in Bismarck, North Dakota. The Hilger family moved to St. Paul, Minnesota in the mid-1890s, where Andrew completed pre-medicine studies at St. Thomas College and went on to graduate from the University of Minnesota Medical School in 1905. The next year, he completed his internship at St. Joseph's Hospital in St. Paul. A world away in Central Europe, the University of Vienna Medical School was rising to prominence as the center of world ENT teaching and research. Andrew Hilger, MD, then traveled to Vienna in 1906 to study ear, nose, and throat medicine and surgery. Dr. Hilger, now trained in ENT at the most advanced teaching and research center of the time, returned to practice ENT in St. Paul, Minnesota in 1912. He served on the St. Joseph's Hospital staff as an ENT doctor and was well respected for his care, competence, and excellent training. In 1920, he was a founding staff member of Miller Hospital, now United Hospital, which was a new type of hospital, a specialist's hospital. The Miller staff was considered elite. He also practiced from an office in the Lowry Medical Arts Building from 1912 until his retirement in 1955. His practice involved throat surgery, such as tonsillectomy and surgery of the voice box for polyps and tubercular scar tissue, croup and diphtheria, infections of the voice box, windpipe and other airway obstructions, likely called for intubation or tracheostomy. His son recalled that in the pre-antibiotic days, Andrew and another doctor did 40 emergency operations in one month at Anchor Hospital, now Regent's Hospital. Draining infections from the ear and related structures prevented death and serious disease, such as meningitis. Also, he was a sports fan who cared for local boxers, some of whom would come to his home at night after a fight for repair of a freshly broken nose. During World War I, Andrew joined the Army Medical Corps and was stationed at Camp Dodge, Iowa, just outside of Des Moines. There he witnessed firsthand the devastating effects of the great influenza pandemic of 1918. Andrew's nephew, Jerome Hilger, was born in 1912, the year Andrew started his ENT practice. He grew up in St. Paul, attended St. Thomas College and the University of Minnesota Medical School, and graduated in 1936. In 1936, Dr. Hilger was an intern at Anchor Hospital, then returned to the University of Minnesota for ENT training in 1937. He was an outstanding student and superb surgeon who worked to develop an independent ENT department with a graduate medical program. Jerome came to St. Paul in 1939 to periodically help Andrew with his surgical cases and they practiced together while he taught at the university. Dr. Jerome Hilger was trained in the ENT surgery of the pre-antibiotic era and was taught to drain abscesses of the sinuses, throat, neck, and ears. The first ripple of local change had occurred in 1937 with the use of the first antibiotic, sulfa, at University Hospital. The bombing of Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941, changed everything for him, the ENT community, and the world. The next change came when the War Department, using the World War I model of university-staffed base hospitals, asked the University of Minnesota to form a unit. Dr. Hilger and the rest of the 26th base hospital staff were activated in February of 1942, and after training, were sent to England in the fall. A transport delay kept the unit near Liverpool for several months in the late fall of that year, 
where Dr. Hilger spent a good deal of time with the reconstituted British maxillofacial surgery units under the direction of Sir Harold Gillies. There he learned their reconstructive techniques for war wounds. The 26th base hospital was transferred to North Africa and subsequently Italy, and he was able to apply the new British surgical techniques as ENT maxillofacial department head. This was a new surgical endeavor for an American ENT physician. Infectious disease treatment was revolutionized by penicillin in 1942. The life-threatening infections of the pre-antibiotic days were now less threatening and there was less need of surgery. The introduction of antibiotics rechanneled the effort of ENT professionals in major ways, many of whom believed that ENT medicine may become a dying specialty. Jerome disagreed. Jerome arrived home in 1946 to find Andrew's St. Paul practice active, but the university in great need of upgraded resident training. He saw with unique clarity that the ENT specialty needed dramatic transformation to survive. This would require surgical research, grant support, and advanced training. And he basically was the founder of Otolaryngology PA as it exists uh, today. He expanded the Hilger practice to a four-physician group in a decade, while invigorating the ENT teaching program at the university. He championed new ear surgery techniques such as tympanoplasty, developed to repair the ravages of pre-antibiotic era infection and restore hearing. When John Shea, MD, developed stapedectomy, the removal and replacement of the third hearing bone in otosclerosis to restore hearing, Dr. Hilger invited him to St. Joseph's Hospital in St. Paul to locally demonstrate this surgical technique. Dr. Hilger was a prime mover with Dr. Sam Hunter in establishing the St. Paul Research Laboratory in which cardiac pacing was pioneered. The ENT section of the laboratory conducted its own projects. This included the development of an electrical monitoring device for use in the diagnosis of facial paralysis, as well as early research into brainwave hearing testing for the diagnosis of infant hearing loss. In 1960, the lab flourished when Albert Homan, MD, joined the Hilger Clinic and the University Department and initiated biomaterials testing at St. Joseph's Laboratory. Dr. Homan was not only a research-trained ear surgeon, but also a maxillofacial reconstructive surgeon and dentist. The post-war years had seen an explosion in high-speed travel in cars without seatbelts on roads designed for an earlier era. Facial injury was common, and Dr. Homan was a master of reconstruction. He and his students taught a generation of ENT physicians reconstructive techniques. Dr. Hilger's great challenge, the reinvigoration of the ENT specialty, had largely been accomplished by the late 1960s. By the mid-1970s, Children's Hospital of St. Paul had developed a large newborn intensive care unit, or NICU, with a need for specialized pediatric ENT care, especially airway management. In 1978, Midwest ENT initiated not only airway support programs, but also an infant high risk for hearing loss screening program, including brainwave audiometry. Then in 1980, new, more conservative surgical techniques were introduced to diminish the need for tracheostomy in newborns. Dr. Barbara Malone, a pediatric fellowship trained otolaryngologist, joined Midwest ENT in 1988 to advance this subspecialty practice area, and she has recently been joined by Dr. Richard Carlin. Obstructive sleep apnea. A sleep-related breathing obstruction accompanied by snoring and daytime sleepiness became a clinical entity in the late 1970s. Midwest ENT strongly supported the establishment of the first diagnostic sleep laboratory in the East Metro area. Moving ahead to the 1980s, Professor Messerklinger, a modern offspring of Dr. Hayek's Vienna School, researched and developed a new form of endonasal sinus surgery. He combined the use of advanced optical telescopes and imaging techniques. 
In 1989 and 1990, Midwest ENT surgeons attended the first courses at Graz University in Southern Austria, learned these techniques, and brought them back to Minnesota. The practice also brought Dr. Gary Wolf from Austria to demonstrate the new techniques at University of Minnesota instructional courses in the early 1990s. During the 1980s, Midwest ENT founded Midwest Surgery Center in an effort to provide more cost-effective surgical care than had previously been available. In 1990, Midwest ENT and the ENT community at large opposed the implementation of a secret guidelines-based prior authorization program. The current transparent models which resulted from this confrontation became the Minnesota and national standard of today. Like a river nearing its mouth, the scope of modern ENT continues to expand. Recent advances in hearing testing now allow testing of the inner ear nerve cells as well as brainwave hearing testing. Advanced imaging studies allow precise slow motion and even stop action vocal cord assessment in the treatment of voice disorders. The scope of head and neck tumor management now integrates surgery, radiation therapy, and chemotherapy in an effort to preserve and restore the greatest functional capacity. Plastic and reconstructive surgery continues to advance with new surgical techniques and adjuvant therapies. Recently, Midwest ENT physicians participated in the development of the pillar anti-snoring technique and in a major study of the relationship of snoring to sleep apnea. The river is long, a century long, but the streams and channels have become clear in the endeavor to provide excellent patient care, teaching, and clinical research.